All right, so now that this crossbow is finished, I'm going to make some proper bolts for it. Just so when I shoot it tomorrow, it's a lot more impressive. So what I've done is I've taken a, a dowel. This is a poplar dowel, 5 16 of an inch. You can use oak or ash or something a little heavier. And that'll make your bolts a little heavier. But even if, even at a very heavy weight, this smaller diameter shaft will hold up in this crossbow because the power stroke is so short. It's only about a 12 inch power stroke. So what we're going to do is I've marked at 18 inches because the The length from the back here to the front is 16 inches. 18 inches will let it overhang about 2 inches. And that will give us a good amount of uh, space, especially if you wanted to put a broadhead on here. You could still put it on this crossbow. So we mark it 18 inches. That way, out of this uh, four foot long dowel I can get two and even the shorter 36 inch dowels you can still get two bolts from one dowel. Now I've had to go and sight down this to make sure it's straight not only that but the grain is also straight with minimal runoff. So now what I do I'm just going to cut it because I'm actually just going to use my tapering tool, I'm just going to use my PVC cutter. It's fast and it works really well. There you go. I've got my two dowels, or my two bolt shafts. Now what I do is I take my taper tool and I just look at the grain and if there's any heavy runoff that becomes the knock. Just because the knock isn't under as much strain as the point is when it hits the target. You want to make sure that your best grain points forward that way when this strikes the target repeatedly or hits something hard the shaft isn't going to break. It'll be able to flex and return. Okay, so now this is ready for point and knock. First, I'm going to be fletching this. Alright, so I'm going to be fletching my bolt right here. So I'm going to start with my odd feather, my top feather which in this case is going to be blue. I'm using 3 inch feathers. You could use longer feathers. I'm using the shorter ones uh, just because that's all I really have on hand. And because the whole bolt is so short, it's only 18 inches long, it doesn't have to really be that long. So I've got my feather clamp, which is just a piece of PVC flattened, ground off on one end till it's open, so I can put my feather inside. You just, as a recap, to put the feather in, you just stick your fingernail, make a little space, place the front of the feather in, slide it in all the way. There it is. So I'm going to be using fletching tape, because I really like fletching tape. Even if I break an arrow or a bolt, or anything really. If I break an arrow, I can always retrieve the feathers and just pull it right off. Turn that off. And I take the back of my knife and I just press this down. It's kind of like contact adhesive. 
me to just go and kind of find an end here. So you can peel off the backing. Peel the backing off. Peel it away. Take the bolt. And then you just want to go ahead. I like going an inch away from the end here. So an inch away from the end. Just place it down straight. Or if you want to put a little bit of a twist to it, you can. Just make sure that if you do put twist, that the air is going to be passing on the inside of the feather. And I'll show you what that means. So if you're going to put twist, make sure that this front edge makes it so that this under part, see so there's a top part and a bottom part. This bottom part is what catches the air. And that will help you get a nice spin. But I'm just putting these on straight. So here's the first feather. I'm just going to do the other two, and I'll show you what that looks like.